Uh, thanks to the viewers. Uh, the comments that they gave us at Milton Keynes were amazing and, and, and we do appreciate that you, you watch these videos and, and enjoy them. Um, because so many people did come and say they watched these videos, I think it is, you know, I think it's important that we tell people the real problems we had at Milton Keynes and don't gloss over that we didn't have problems mm. because we did. And I personally, you know, would say to all the people watching this, you know, Chris and Phil uh, and the boys, the twins, work beyond the, well, well beyond the call of duty. I mean, they were there till three in the morning. Two. But, well, two o'clock in the morning trying to get this working. Um, we did have serious problems, um, but despite the problems, we did put on a show, albeit it collapsed every now and again, but we did put on a show um, to make sure that the people that came did see it working. So I think that it's important for those people who are contemplating building bigger layouts <clears throat> that we do really hear what those problems were. So, uh, you know, if you could explain what the problems were. So the first problem we had was with the track. We started off with 16 droppers missing on the new ends. So that's an hour, two hours gone fixing them. We had five joints in the baseboard that needed all the track aligning. That works out at 84 track joints that needed resoldering. There was 40 joints in the fiddle yard that all needed redoing. So that is a day gone just doing them. But then we've got that floaty bit of track on making tracks three. So we lined all that up, put the back seat on and it all moved. So that's another couple hours wasted. So that was Thursday, Friday gone. Um, Friday I put the booster on and it kept shorting. I think that's in one of your videos. I yes. put it in and it kept shorting. Yeah. So I just unplugged it, left it alone. Came to that Saturday morning and it was 10 versions out on the firmware. Brand new out of the box, ten, the software was 10 versions out of date. I started updating at half past nine, didn't finish till 10 to five. As soon as everybody left, it updated. <laughs> And did that solve that problem? And that got rid of all the shorting, booster was fine. On, what, Is the model for that, plug it in before you go and let it update just in yeah, case. Yeah, so it's you ran out of the box. Yeah, you know it was just going to work out the box. Yeah, <laughs> ten, 10 versions out of date. Yeah, how long have they been sat in someone's warehouse though? Yeah, anyway. <laughs> then, what, nine o'clock Saturday morning, yeah. all the tablets lagged. You push the button to move a train, five minutes later it moved. Yeah, I was doing that issue on the Z21 where you press it, and you know when you get the orange bar? To you mm. could see it, the trains were responding, but, but the orange bar wasn't there, there, which is next to useless when you're trying to control the trains. Never seen it before. No. Never seen it. The only Is that something you feel like a bandwidth? No. no. I, th no. I thought... I, we thought it was memory, didn't we? No, it's not. I thought it was a Wi-Fi issue. Mm. So I turned all the tablets off, and I just had one tablet, and it fixed it. Right. Five minutes later, it all came back, because somebody turned all the tablets back on. One of the tablets somewhere was overloading something. Yeah. So we turned them all off except for the apples. So we had eight Android and it fixed itself. Yeah. We then turned all the apples on one at a time over the day and it never came back. Yeah. Never mm -hmm. seen it ever again since. I, with system two, I've seen similar issues with the Wi-Fi because you send a command out and it uses a web socket to return the data. Yeah, it, it was a coming back issue. So it was either a tablet trying to send the database across that hadn't stopped, that was just trying to fill it full of traffic. I can't understand that though, because we did finish that. I know. A lot of or that. a tablet was trying to do an update over the internet. So we got Wi-Fi but no internet, because we don't need the internet. And it was trying to ping the, a server somewhere. I imagine and that, more likely. And it was flooding the network. One of those two. Yeah. Never seen it before in two and a half years of doing it now. And it only, only happened for an hour. I think that's more likely to be yeah. honest. He didn't come back, never seen it again. But that took an hour to fix. Oh, it was more yeah. than an hour. It was yeah, but, working sorry. on the door in two hours by the time we yeah. got to that. Which meant I didn't have time to put the booster in Saturday morning. So I didn't want to put the booster in in case it was shorting, which is why we had the power issues all Saturday and all that nonsense. I have to wait for it to update and blah, blah, blah. Then Sunday we came in, the whole control system was dead. 
was working fine when we left it. It was. Yeah. We turned it off, the points wouldn't move, signals wouldn't change, nothing. Did I hear that? So I, I, me and Dave went round, we unplugged everything, it was sort of working, sort of wasn't. So I disconnected all the station, pulled all the plugs out of the station, just enough to get the fiddly odd working, and left it alone. Yeah. Which, Which is why we had something like the points in it. Points, <laughs> signals, blocks, all that <laughs> nonsense. Just he plugged it in, dead. <clears throat> Somewhere, one of the chips has died and is causing an issue. Which one it is, you can't test when we're running. You can't start unplugging things while we're running trains in case I plugged it back in and it didn't work, it killed everything. Yeah. So it was a question of, it's sort of working the fiddly odd, leave it alone. And because we got all the track issues on Friday with all the solder joints, I didn't have time to set the signals up, which is why they're all higgledy piggledy not working. So it all stems back from about a hundred joints on the track needed tweaking. Which I take responsibility for. Well, that big one on the front is your fault. Is yeah. that a legacy of it being transported? It's a legacy of the ends of being for making tracks three and then the other bits being making tracks one and the other, they've all been tweaked so many times. Yeah. And I think... Uh, and, and we also relayed some of the track, which is where the dropper problem came from. Yeah. The track was relayed and no droppers were put in. And none of these issues are a problem. It just took Snow all ball. Friday. Mm. So where do we do the public floggings? There, start with him. <sighs> well, and, honestly, stop I think... Trying so, to so, and <laughs> and the, the, the bigger issue, which was the floaty bit of track on making tracks three, was your fault, because you relay that bit of track and didn't fix it. Is it not the, surely the <laughs> ultimate <laughs> solution to all of this is nowhere to test? Yeah, it's more time. Nowhere no, to test in the no, first place. Uh, no, I no, I don't think it is time. I think the problem I had was, and it's not an excuse. No, no, this is an excuse, it's just what when we were built, When we were building all these layouts, you had a target to aim at and you could see what you were doing. Mm -hmm. When you break it down to you were joining those three, all the jobs are small and insufficient and you can't really get your teeth into them. And so you do one little job and you almost sort of walk away till the next day. You come in, the layout's finished, you spend all day tweaking it, and yeah. it's the same state as you left it. Yes. You in. And certainly the, the, um, the floating track piece, um, I do take you know, responsibility for that. And, and I thought, and you did when we had it up, we thought we'd solved yeah. it. I didn't see the bounce till we took the, no, and till I, we took the backboard off. Well, was it? So it's the, is it the, it's the slow. The it's coming out the, the fake tunnel. The north, yeah, yeah, yeah. north side yeah, of the yeah, station. No, yeah, yeah. Um, the join the slow. Where it, yeah, so where, where that, where killed, where the baby killed people. Yeah, well, that, that new bridge that was put in that yeah. I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's on a uh, right hand side. Yeah, yeah, it's on a foam bit of, uh, what do you call it, insulation board. Yeah. And it was hinging and it was floating up and down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So what, so, what had happened, right, in, in reality is, David cut the piece up and put a piece under it to raise it up 10 mil yeah. so that they met that's what he'd done yeah when i was putting the foam down the side to make the bank i inadvertently knocked his piece of wood out because his piece of wood if you think about was across the board and then the, the other board was put on top of it well when i put the scenery in i'd knock that piece out and i hadn't noticed so it was unsupported at so that point. it was unsupported yeah right. so i uh, the back scene wasn't on, the backboard wasn't on, mm -hmm. so I lined it all up vertical, mm -hmm. ignoring the left and right because that was even worse. Um, Dave then came around and put the backboards on, mm. which then tightened it all up and yeah. moved it a quarter of an inch again. Right. So Excellent. I spent hours trying to get it right, and he'll be doing it again. Also, with it being so long, to test it, you've got to send the train, wait eight minutes for it to come back again before you can test the bit you've just done. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just to finish Sunday issues. So you spent an hour putting the network right. Yes. And that was a valuable hour that we needed to put the booster in. That's it, yeah. And then and I didn't want to put the booster in just in case it started causing more exactly. shorting. So we started but, taking the APT off. Yeah, so, so what, we, what we'd done, we put, because we had it working on the Saturday, we thought, great. Right, put more locos on. We can put more stock out, more mm. locos. But because we were running right on the en edge of the envelope of the power, yeah. that took us over the... The amps that we had available. So, the, the base station does three amps, and the, the booster we used at Chester does another three for six. We were drawing about five to five and a half amps, which is just under. Then we'd short somewhere, 
when you turn it all back on, you get an inrush current of six and a half amps, and it trips. And then it's a continuous cycle of it comes in, it trips, it comes in, it trips. By removing the APT, you took all the lights off it, turning the sound off just gets rid of that inrush current, which then allowed us to run for until 12 ish. Yeah. yeah. At that point, it was just getting worse and worse and worse. Yeah. And it was either question we put the booster in, or we turn it all off. So I put the second booster in to give us another three amps, which is up to nine, and that fixed it straight away. Yeah. Yeah. And that firmware update fixed the shorting issue that I had on Friday on your video. Mm. And so all this stems back from the track, which causes lack of time, which then the booster causes a problem on the Saturday. And then to fix the network, I had to pinch a cable off the booster in the morning to get that working. So I had to go to the Hornby stand, Hornby magazine stand, to pinch one of their cables to fix that one. We couldn't find them. What, what implications are there for if, if and when the grand challenge is extended to make Just another booster? Another booster was sort of for, for right. the film was updated. But the, the thing is, the big lesson of the weekend is, and this applies to everybody, don't go to a show without testing your layout. Yeah, yeah what do you, which is easier said than done. Of course it is, it must be 156 feet. One, Where do you put 156 feet up? 152. Um, In a truck. It's, no, it's only four and a bit weeks since we were at Chester. Yeah. We've all got to catch up on all the other jobs that we should have done and shouldn't have been doing, and it just wasn't time. Yeah. If, if we'd have said, we were 12 months on from Chester, none of this would have happened. No, no, no. But for four weeks to go from 64 feet, remove 16 feet from that layout, and then add another whatever to it from two years ago that was done during lockdown in 2019. Well, it was always going to be a challenge, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. and the main thing was we kept trains running. Yeah, yeah. and you know, I mean, the, I mean the, co the comments, on Facebook and, and the YouTube and, uh, and all the other channels we've got were phenomenal. Yeah. I mean, they were hard. I mean, they were humbling to be quite honest. Yeah. Some of the comments. And, and not only that, we went from 64 feet there last year with just the front on display yeah. to being two and a half times longer with the back all open, and it was busier than it was last year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the amount of people there. Yeah. Yeah. So it was. Uh, I, mean, was I mean, it was hard work. I mean, yeah. I don't think I've ever, t I lost my voice by Saturday night. Mm -hmm. you know? And the other problem we had, sorry, was my laptop was set up to do the, um, the uh, loco programming, but then I needed my laptop to fix the problems with everything else. Then we had to pinch Dave's laptop, which isn't a problem, but it's another hour setting it all up, downloading the upset software. It's, it's all these little things that snowball. And, and, and you did a grand job, Dave. You, you didn't expect to be working that hard, did you? No. no. It was fun, though. You had a bit of a sweat but on you, there, didn't you? You enjoyed it, Dave, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, the thing is... Some of the comments on that guy that looks young. Oh, that'd be me with that was you. Was the, you, sure. you, you, you look like the guy from, what's it, Back to the Future. Right. That's that's <laughs> how one got. The, thing is, you. the guy from Back to the Future with a flowery shirt. Oh, dear. When you're in it, it's like never again. As soon as you get home, two days later, you're like, I miss that. I miss being in the thick of it. Yeah. Whether I'm playing trains or helping Phil with yeah. an issue, it doesn't um, matter. It's fun. It's great. If, again, coming back to the track issue, if you could send a train off and trust it to come back, you could send more trains around because yes. one person could run two or three trains. The way it was, you needed one person per 50 feet of track, really, to run it which would have been three people per line, yeah. which would then take us to four people per line at the NEC next year, if we don't get the track nailed down. I was at the far end being handed over a train, and I could see the headlights on the front, and then I'd be on the radio. Is it moving? Yeah. And I'd get, it's, it's, it's definitely it's, moving. And you have no perception of movement no. until you've cleared a couple of tunnels and you're mm. approaching the station. But so, if you could trust it, if you could trust the trains to always come back, Complete, it, com yeah, yeah, it wouldn't be so much of an issue because, oh, it's moving, it'll be fine. Mm. Where it was, is it actually going to make it? Mm -hmm. So you've got to keep an eye on it all the time. Yeah. You're bang on with that as well because towards the end on Sunday, we had me, Chris and Tom and Benedict. But yeah. for, and 
it, I, you said the word that we gave you at the end. It wasn't actually, you didn't actually have to really drive the train. No. It was just the confidence part That's of it. knowing that somebody had seen it. Yeah. And then you felt so much more comfortable pinging yeah. trains out. And I think the last hour that we did on Sunday yeah, was right. brilliant. It was it brilliant great. fun. Yeah. It was absolutely great with yeah. the three of us just flying the train jam on the yeah. fast. It looked great. Which of the works out to be about 50 feet per person. Yeah, train, exactly. Right on. Which is what you can just about manage. Yeah. But if you could trust the trains, which, was it, when did we stay late? Saturday morning? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mike was sending six trains out to church chasing, and because he could trust them, it was fine. Because they're so far apart, it wasn't an issue. Yeah. But then as soon as you couldn't trust a line, all your confidence went, so it had to slow all the way down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And every time something shorts out and the trains stop, all the wagons yes. bunch up and then stretch out again. And Which, that's what causes the derailing. Oh, oh, six problems, not yeah. one. Which comes stems back to Chester, which is where I want everything stopped when you get a short. Where when it's us operating it, it's not such a big issue to this bit can be shorted while the rest keeps running. Were there fewer trains in the... No, uh, many, many that more. many more. Okay, and, and that's a comment I saw. Quite a few people said that to me as well. Yeah, was it because the fiddle yards were that much bigger? Yes. Yeah, yeah. yes. So I just wanted to put that right. There was at one time a ridiculous amount of trains, but because of the size of the fiddle yard, it looked empty that it did at Chester Cathedral. Yeah. You know how many we had on at Pete? Yeah, on Sunday morning when I did the database, there were 57 trains in the database. 57 <laughs> trains? Yeah. Which and scale that was, the trains? That was the hardest thing I thought for me about the Sunday. Well, was, there was occasional You've got to balance, have this balancing act between adding trains on and actually trying to give it, give tablets to people to operate because the hardest bit was, I think we got to about 12 o'clock on Sunday and, you know, I think we had a, with the categories of the train, we had one issue where one of the trains is on a different line, but because you've got to ping it out, I think we set them out to 14 or 15 different devices yeah. and keeping them in sync is even more important, I think, when you're operating on a larger layout. I know that. You come over and someone goes, this train's not on here, and I was like, that's just one mistake where it's on the wrong line and we just haven't set it up properly. Yeah. But that kind of accumulates that, and you end up with... That's my yeah. biggest problem with the Z21. Yeah, can't not being able to. Is all the database of the locos are stored on each device. Yeah. So if one goes out of sync, you've got to then update it. So you've got to update all of them. Where the other ones store all the information centrally and then your tablets read off it. So you just update one and they all update it in live timings. And the size that we're dealing with. Yeah. Who does well, that? Which system does that? JMRI does that. Okay. Um, it is better, but again, all this was set up for Jester. Yes. Not for a yeah. two-day show. Yeah. And you've well, got to think layout three times the size. You've got to think what what works for Chester is more important than what works for a two-day show. Yes. Because it's for six weeks, for a lot longer time, and it's more interactive. So you want to keep the kids and stuff working. That's the marathon rather than the yeah. two-day sprint. Yeah, because trying to update fourteen tablets in the morning before yeah. you operate a layout is just. And again, you you know, know, it's, it's a major. Uh, uh, negative that isn't it? If they can't read off a central database and update, well, they can read. You just have to share it. With them. Yeah. And the, the problem with that is, you go <laughs> to share it, and there's ten Amazon Fire tablets yeah. connected to the network. Which one's which? And mm. we thought that was an issue with the name of the tablets, and it's not. It's not me, I, Benedict, and Tom are both all three of us have got named iPads, yes. yeah. and it just says iPad, and yes. you're like, <coughs> you're it's, like Tim, it's running down the thing. When it tries to connect to my phone, it says you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your, I, I can't understand it. that at all. Really couldn't understand. Because I, I did that. When I first put those Amazon tablets, I renamed them all. Yeah, I saw that, yeah. It didn't work. Yeah, I can't, I still don't understand. That's why quite I'm a shortcoming, isn't it? The, yes. The that is because you just have to problem. line them all up and then keep going, accept, accept, yes. accept all the way. Only, the, the easiest way I've found it is to create a separate hotspot that only two tablets are connected to. Yeah. Then you can share it across that hotspot, turn the second tablet off, and reconnect another one. Yeah, yeah. That's the It's a bit of a make do kind of. Uh, yeah, well, yeah. it's a one, it's a two-day show. Mm. Don't forget at Chester, we've got much fewer locos, say 15 to 20 versus 60. Yeah. There's only, really, stuff doesn't change very much. So yeah. after the first day, you're only adding one or two locos per day. And they're only ever really being added to one line. Yeah, and don't forget. And you've only got four tablets. No, we've got eight. eight. Yeah, but you're only using four at Chester, really. Yeah, you can get away with four. Yeah. So with the other You can only do maintenance on one of them yeah. and make sure yeah. they're up to date, don't you? Yeah. 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 <laughs> And it only takes, it's sometimes quicker just to add a loco to a tablet than it is to share them. It's miles quicker. Yeah. <laughs> it's exponentially quicker. Yeah. 
Well, it worked. Strange round. Most of them came back. And I said at the very beginning, it'll either work or it didn't. Yeah. And it sort of did. Uh, the, the last few hours on Sunday, it was brilliant. Yeah, because it was working smooth. We've got the power. We've worked out how to operate yeah. it. It's just then, it was great. again, yeah, like a really time, the signal didn't work. I had to butcher it on Sunday so that you couldn't use the bi-directional platforms on Sunday. Um, another setup day would have then solved all the track problems on the Thursday to give us Friday to plug the booster in. The booster would have updated straight away because there was no people in the building. And then it all snowballed from there, or would have done. So no. cascade, cascading problems. Yeah, yeah. But it worked. It trains around. People were entertained. We put the show on somehow, didn't we? Yeah, yeah I just thought, you know, for people watching, I thought we'd, we'd tell them, uh, you know, we'd not gloss over the problems we have because, as I said, effort. I I think you guys did an amazing job. I mean, I, I, I was just standing talking to people, but you know, um, and it did get funny at points where we brought in a replacement bus service. But you know, people took it in the fun it was meant to be, wasn't it? I mean, it was like everybody was laughing at the the jokes. You know, looking at the other vi videos of the venue, um, I don't see any negatives. Um, it was all positive. Yeah, the the. The only issue over there is parking, and that's because the football was on. Oh, yeah. Um, well, I can't be responsible for the bloody well, parking as well. No, no, no. You know what I mean? The tech responsibility for the, for well, the we problems we had. Our own stuff no, to deal no, with. No, but what I mean is, because it was really too late to move the show to a different weekend for us. Yes. Because, for example, to vote John, I booked his time off for this weekend. Yeah. Then we haven't got a driver to take the van down. Mm. And it all... We just, it was too late once the football had been announced to move it all. And? And if the buzz hadn't broken down, and if, and if, and if. Yeah. Um, but, but we had enough, we had more than enough vans as well, didn't we? Yes, yeah, so we took five, we, we hired five vans, we did it in four, with a bit of space to spare. Yeah. Um, plus your car, obviously. Yeah. But we, all that stuff in your car could have gone in a van. Yeah. 